Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving our praise, our honor, our glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, Eshalawam. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And in this lesson, what we're going to go into, man, is is what's really being done around us. What's happening? So we see all these different events taking place. You know, all the signs of the times coming to pass. Everything is playing out. The, uh, everything is playing out all according to prophecy, all according to the Most High's will. Because what? It's all leading up to the Most High fulfilling that promise that he made. Uh, to our forefather Abraham, man. That's what it's all about. And when it's all said and done, the Most High is going to bring us back into our land as he's promised to do. Not only did he promise to do, do this, he swore upon himself that he would do it. And that's why we see everything happening in the earth the way it's happening in the earth, man. It's also Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah can fulfill his will and his promise that he made unto our forefather Abraham. So that's what we're going to get into, man. We're going to pull a few scriptures and Lord willing that uh, this is edifying to the elect. Now this is Genesis 17 and 1. And, and this is what is this is the true narrative of the Bible, man. Not that bullshit that you learned from the pagan Roman Catholic Christian church. That bullshit that you learned over there from those weirdos, those people who have no understanding of the scriptures, it doesn't add up to the Most High's will and what the Most High said. You see? And this is why the entire world is confused on what's really going on in these scriptures. That's why the entire world, when, when they hear us bring out the true understanding of the scriptures, they are opposed to it because they've never heard it before. You see, and they're doing everything in their power to uphold this false doctrine and dogma that they've believed in their entire lives. Because they don't want what we're saying to be true. Because at the end of the day, these nations only see us as being niggas, spicks, wetbacks, tontos, tomahawks, just a proverb in the Bible. That's all they see us as, man. They don't see us as our rulers and kings and priests unto the Most High God, Yahweh. But that's exactly what we are. We're telling you, according to the Most High's will, He's about to take us from this low condition and bring us into the land of promise according to the oath that He made unto our forefather Abraham, man. That's where everything is happening the way it's happening because the Most High is in the process of, of, of uh, bringing that promise to fulfillment. So Genesis 17 and 1, it says... And when Abraham, it's like when Abram was ninety years old and nine, Yahweh appeared unto Abram, and said unto him, "I am the Almighty Power. Walk before me and be thou perfect." And how was he gonna be? How was he gonna walk perfect before the Most High in faith? You see, in faith was Abraham, Abram, uh, Abram perfect before the Most High. Verse two says what? And that's how we're commanded to be. Perfect in our faith in Yahweh Shah. Verse 2 says, What? And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and the most I taught with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now the uh, heathen take this as if it's talking about Abraham is the father of all nations. No, man. That's not how it works. Because as you read uh, further on into the history, it tells you, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, that, that's, who the seed, that's who the seed of promise is. Isaac. And then it went from Isaac to who? It went from Isaac to Jacob. It was never talking about all nations being Abraham's seed because there were nations already established before Abraham even had any children, children man. The Hamites were well established in the earth. The Japhites were well established in the earth. 
You see? So no, Abraham is not the father of all nations. When, when it talks about father, being a father of many nations, it's talking about the great multitude of the Israelites. Because every nation, uh, let me say, every tribe is a nation unto itself. And when you go even deeper, every man, when we come into the full, for, uh, the fullness of the glory that the Most High is going to bring us into, every Israelite man will be a nation unto himself. That's what it's talking about. That's how Abram is, a, is going to be a father of many nations. Let's get that real quick. This is Isaiah 60. And yep, 22, it says, what? A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. And this is for every Israelite man. We're going to have many children in the kingdom of heaven. Too. And that also goes back to a promise that the Most High made that what? Abraham's seed would be as the, uh, the stars of heaven for multitude, as the sand of the seashore for number, as the dust of the earth. And like the most I said, if you can count, the, if a man can count the dust of the earth, you see, <laughs> that's how great Abraham's seed is going to be. And you can't count the dust of the earth, man. It's innumerable. That's the many nations that Abraham is going to be a father of. It was never talking about. <laughs> all nations being brought <laughs> into the fold because they're Abraham's seed no man you see now it goes on to say verse 5 neither shall thy name any more be called Abram but thy name shall be called Abraham for, fa for a father of many nations have I made thee and that goes into what you see the the, the just the vast multitude of Israelites that were going to come out of the seed of Abraham you see that verse 6 says what and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee you see and who are these kings who, who is that alluding to who is that alluding to that's alluding to the 12 tribes of Israel. The kings that were going to come out of Abraham. Revelation uh, 5. Right here. Yup. Revelation 5 and 9 it says what? And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to the Most High by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. You see that? What is this talking about? The great gathering of the remnant of Israel that the Most High promised to gather from all the nations that we've been scattered to. Coming back looking like all the heathen nations that we've been living amongst for all these generations. Talking all these crazy ass languages that, we, that we've been talking amongst these heathen nations for all these generations. Yahweh shall redeem us from amongst these heathen, man. Because when you go into that word for kindred, what does it go into? Fule. Strong's G, 5443. Fule. Fule says what a tribe in the new testament all the persons descended from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch jacob you see that this is talk this is talking about israelites man and where were they redeemed from to the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation this is why yahweh shai that's why he was that sacrifice to redeem the israelites from among the nations we've been scattered to beginning with the remnant right now he goes on to say in verse 10 and it has made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. You see that? Those are the kings that were promised to come out of Abraham. And it all goes back to what? Exodus 19 and verse 5. Now therefore, if if now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. 
These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And that goes back into what? The promise that the Most High made unto our forefather Abraham. That's what this thing is all about. And a lot of guys have lost sight of that, man. And you see, that they, they've lost sight that the Most High must fulfill this because he put it upon his name that he would do so. See, uh, a lot of Israelites are in this thing or understand that they're Israelites, but they have no understanding of the of the scope of it, of uh, of what the Heavenly Father Yahweh is doing. They really don't get it. They don't understand what they're a part of, man. Everything that you see happening around you is all leading up to the Most High bringing his people back into the land to fulfill the promise made unto Abraham. That's what it's all about. Jacob's trouble, the nuclear missiles, America being destroyed, Esau being taken down, it's all leading up to the Most High fulfilling the promise. That's what it's all about. So if you're thinking that you here about to be in America forever to be a fucking YouTube celebrity, you out here clout chasing, you out here seeking vainglory, you really don't understand what this is a part of. You see, you, you don't want to go just don't want to go through the straight gate, don't want to go through no tribulation, but that's exactly what we have to go through to get to where we want to be. And Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh is going to bring the remnant through it all, man, to fulfill the promise made unto Abraham. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. You see, he's going to bring us back into our land, man. So we can do what? Rule it in righteousness as he's laid out according to his will. You see? Genesis 17 in 6 it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee what is the most I alluding to right here he's alluding to bringing us into that second covenant which, which pertains to what you see which entails what that entails us being changed, taken out of these bodies, giving those new righteous immortal bodies. You see, having the law, statutes, and commandments put into our inward part to never sin again, to never transgress against the Most High again, being fully tied back unto our God, our power, our Lord, you see, our Father, you see, by way of Yahweh Shah. And He's going to be our God, and, he, and we're going to be His people. That's what all these things, when you're reading these prophecies, it all goes back to the promise made unto Abraham, man. <laughs> you see? And what does it say in verse 8? And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land where, wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, I will, and I will be their God. That's what it's all about. And that's why all the prophecies pertaining to this is always repeated. It's because this is what the Most High is doing. He's not doing nothing new. He hasn't altered his plan. How, we, how do we know this? Because it tells us in Malachi 3 and 6. For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Most High has laid out his counsel from the beginning. And that's what you see unfolding right around you each and every day. And it hasn't changed. Because if it does change, that will make what? The most high lying. And we know Numbers 23 and 19 tells us what? The most high is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? Exact everything the most high has spoken, everything the most high intended to do from the beginning is what's being done because the most high does not lie. He does not change. He does, there is no altering his counsel. He's already declared the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, verse 8. It says what? Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it to mind, O ye transgressors. And a lot of men who, who claim to be Israelites, they've forgotten this. They're not showing themselves men because they're tucking tail and running. You see? Becoming cowards, changing the doctrine to try to appease Esau and his feelings. Because they feel like he, oh, Esau showed some mercy. Man, look, look, man. Everything is playing out how the Most High wants it to. And this devil is doing exactly what the Most High ordained him to do from the beginning. He's going to come down having great wrath. <laughs> you see, he has to. 
He has to before we can move on to the next stage of prophecy. Before the uh, the promise is fully fulfilled, Esau has to come down having great wrath. This is a part of it. This is a part of the cost you should have counted before you went out there talking about you were uh, an Israelite, man. And now we see a lot of you guys who really didn't understand what this thing was about. You're, 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 you're folding up, man. That's why the most I say is what? Isaiah 46 and 8. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am the most high and there is none else. I am the most high and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. It was already declared from the beginning how the end was going to be. And here we are in it. Yeah, it's going to get crazy. Yeah, it's going to get brutal. It's going to get harsh. It's going to be savage. Perilous times in the last days, right? But when you go into the, the vision that the Most High has for his people, hey, the remnant, they're not overcome by this time. They're going to be protected and shielded and defended. It's because what? We came into this thing for the right reasons. We came to serve Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, and do as he's commanded us to do. We didn't have no arterial motors, man. We weren't, we weren't looking at this thing like the Christian church trying to, trying to make a quick book. We ain't making no money off of this because the most I said what? Freely you have received, freely give. We're not making merchandise of the most high's flock. We've done this for the right reasons, man. And this is why we're so bold in our stance and in our faith. Because we have great confidence towards Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah because we've done what he's told us to do. We understand what this is all about. And we have to go through this straight gate. We have to go through this fire. But at the end of the day, it's all leading up to what? The promises and the oath being fulfilled. That expected end that the most I has towards us. Thoughts of peace and not of evil as it tells you in Jeremiah 29 and 11. A lot of you have lost the vision of what, what this thing is really about. This is why you're talking about Babylon the Great. It's the promised land and ain't no tribulation coming. And we're going to be here for another 10, 20, 15, 10, 15, 20 years. You don't want the most out to bring the promises to pass. You don't want the most out to fulfill the oath. But he will. And if you're against it, he's going to just get your ass up out of the way. And prophecy is just going to continue to steamroll along, man. But Isaiah 46 and 10 says what? Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. And this is what you're witnessing. The Most High's counsel standing, him doing all his pleasure, you see? And it all leads up to what? The remnant of the nation of Israel being saved and planted back into the land of Israel, you see? To usher in the era of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of righteousness, led by our Lord Yahweh Shah and the 144,000. That's what the Most High has laid out to come to pass. This is what it's all leading to. You see? But, so we got it right here in Genesis, right? So, let's go here to Genesis 22. Right here, right? So we'll start at verse 15. It says, And the angel of Yahweh called unto Abraham out of, the, out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, By myself have I sworn, By myself have I sworn, Because he could swear by no greater, He swore on himself. You see that? I Meaning he must bring this to pass. And a lot of Israelites are down here as if the Most High is not going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Confused and puzzled about why all these things are going on, it's because the Most High is fulfilling the oath. Genesis 22 and 16 says what? And said, By myself have I sworn, saith Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, slacky, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate 
of his enemies because what they're going to be brought into rulership <laughs> you see we're going to possess the gate of our enemies because we're going to put you heathen nations into slavery this is all a part of that oath the most I made unto Abraham and it's being fulfilled each and every day that passes by it gets clearer and clearer man And it's all going to lead up to what? The second coming of Yahweh the taking down of the heathen nations, the destruction of America. We know that MOTB has to come first, but all these things are leading up to what? The oath being fulfilled. And us being brought into rulership. It, did we not just read that in uh, Revelation 5? And has made us kings and priests unto our God, and we shall reign on the earth. That goes into what? The promise and the oath that the Most High made unto our forefather Abraham, man. That's what this thing is all about. This is why all these different events are playing out all around you. It's that simple. It ain't, it ain't overcomplicated. It says what? It should be easy. Uh, it shall be easy to them to understand, roughly paraphrasing. But that's what that's what this is all about. says what and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice and that's because what jake is scattered everywhere and these nations are eating because jake is there they're doing good because jake is there look at america why, why has america flourished the way it's flourished because the israelites are here you see and eventually nations they'll be blessed in the kingdom of heaven to be what to be up on our right the, uh, the righteous rulers to follow the ways of righteousness life expectancy is going to increase disease rate is going to drop the divorce rate is going to drop see all this uh this uh disorder and chaos and confusion that we see in the earth it won't be a thing in our kingdom we're going to get rid of all that man and the nations are going to be blessed not on our level but they'll be they'll be enjoy, they'll be able to enjoy the fruits of righteousness that's the blessing they receive <laughs> you see to get to live up under the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven but this is what it's all leading to man let's get you know what I want to go to the apocrypha because I want to get it in Baruch because uh, this is all throughout the scriptures right so let's get Baruch chapter 2 and verse 20 We'll start at verse 20. We'll start at verse 30. Baruch 2 and 30. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And this is why, this is the answer why you see so many black Hispanics, so uh, so many so-called black Hispanic and Native Americans standing up proclaiming that they're Israelites, because in the land of our captivities it was prophesied that we would do this. All the answers that you're looking for is all in prophecy. We've been telling you this, but you're trying to you're trying to look around uh, the truth of the matter, man. The reason we're standing upon our feet here in the land of our captivities is because prophecy. The Most High said it, said uh, said it would be so in prophecy. You see, that's 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 the answer. The Most High is waking up the Israelites in all the lands that He scattered them to. This is why we we are remembering ourselves. Verse thirty one says what, and it shall come. I'm sorry, and shall know that I am Yahweh their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. You see, gonna be able to what accept the truth of the matter, man, through the Holy Spirit. Verse thirty two, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name. And who's doing that? Who's praising the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in, the cap in their captivity? Us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And this is happening all throughout the world. See, from, 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 from Australia to New York. You see, from, from, from Miami to Alaska. <laughs> from Arizona to Dallas. From, from Philadelphia to fucking 
Denver. All over the planet Earth, man. From Africa to the UK. The Israelites are being reawakened to the understanding of who they are. And they're calling upon the name of their God in their captivity. According to the, what the Most High laid out in prophecy. Why is this happening? It's because the Most High is fulfilling an oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham. That's why this is happening. He's preparing to bring the remnant up out of captivity to bring, to bring them back into their land once and for all, as he's promised he would do. That's your answer. It ain't that deep, man. You see, but the people of the world, they don't want to accept the fact of what's really happening. You see? But you have no choice. It was already laid out before the earth was even created how this thing was going to play out. And it's been moving right along since the beginning. So verse 33 says what? And return from their stiff neck, meaning repent, and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers was sent before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised unto the... <sighs> and I will bring them again unto the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. Does that not go to everything we just read in Genesis that the Most High promised unto our forefather, Abram, who later became Abraham? All the way here in Baruch. You see? Verse 35 says what? And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God. And they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. To do what? To fulfill the oath made unto our forefather Abraham. Which was then pa passed down to Isaac. Which was then passed down to Jacob. Which was then passed. Jacob whose la name was later changed to Israel. Then it was passed down to who? The twelve sons of Jacob. Or the twelve sons of Israel. The tribes, man. You see? Hmm. Let's get. Oh, yeah. Let's get this. This is one of my favorites, too. Psalms 105 and 6. It says, What? Oh, ye seed of Abraham, his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is Yahweh our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham. And his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto, it, unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. You see that? You see? It's laid out all throughout the scriptures, man. This is the oath that's being fulfilled right before your eyes. You see? But to get... <laughs> to get... To where we finally want to be, man. We have to go through much tribulation, as it tells you in Acts 14 and 22. Second Ezra is uh, 7. Having to walk through the straight gate. This is a part of it. This is what we're coming into. You see? Let's get... I think the point is being made, but it's all throughout. Man, there's so many places I can go. I can go to Isaiah... I can go to Jeremiah, I can go to Ezekiel, and that's one of my favorite ones. Let's do Ezekiel 36 and we'll wrap it up. Let's do Ezekiel 36, man, listen. Because I can end up reading this whole chapter. You know what? Fuck it. I got time today. <laughs> let's, get, let's get Ezekiel 36 and uh, 6 it says. Prophesy therefore concerning the and once you that's what you have. This is what you gotta understand. The Most High is not finna move away from this oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham. 
Esau ain't moving shit. The most high the most high's prophecy is gonna blow straight through Esau's bitch ass. You see, <laughs> and it's going to what? It's going to be the kingdom of heaven, just like the most I promised he would bring his his people into. These, these like, our enemies are not stopping anything, man. They don't have the power to do so. Everyone is subject to the most I's will. And according to the most I's will, the next stop after Babylon falls is what? The kingdom of heaven. You see, the next stop after Esau's demise, you see, is what? The kingdom of heaven, according to what he promised our forefather Abraham and swore upon himself that he will uphold and keep. <laughs> There's nothing that these devils can do, man. So Ezekiel 36 and 6, it says, Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord power, Yahweh, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. How is our land bearing that shame? Because what? The heathen are over there committing genocide, worshiping false idols, committing abominable acts, eating abominable meats, just doing all manner of wickedness in that land. You see, which is supposed to be the holy land, meaning what? You're supposed to live in the holy land according to the holy law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that's not being done right now up under the heathen. And that's why it's what? Bearing that shame. But what is, what is it going to say? Verse 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. To do what? To fulfill the oath that I made unto your father Abraham. That's what it's all about. If this wasn't true, if this wasn't said to come to pass, why is the Most High constantly speaking this through the mouth of the prophets? Ain't that how the Most High communicates with the world? Uh, namely his people yes or no yes it is let's show you Hosea where you at oh man Hosea 10 Hosea 12 and 10 so like it I have spoken by the prophets and I have used multi I have used fuck on say Hosea 12 and 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. The most the most high is speaking through his prophets. All these things that the prophet was speaking, the most high put the words in their mouths. These, these ain't just things the prophets came up with. These are things the most high spoke through them, letting his people know what his will is, what he intends to do. You see? So go back to Ezekiel 36, but let's move. Let's get a, uh, nah, we can go ahead. But it goes on to say, Ezekiel 36 and 8, it says, But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. And how is our land going to be tilled and sown? Let's show you. Then it, did, it, did it not say a uh, part of that oath the most I made was what? Abraham's seed was going to possess the gate of his enemies, right? So according to Isaiah 62, no, 61, yep. Isaiah 61 and 5, it says what? And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. That's how our land is going to be tilled and so on once we go back into it. It's going to be built up by you heathen nations. You see, oh, hold up, Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. You see that? The heathen nations are going to serve us to fulfill that promise made unto Abraham. So you can be against slavery all you want to. Look, man, it's a part of that oath the most I made. It's, it, it has to happen. And it will. As we're reading in prophecy, you see, according to the words the most I spoke through the, pro the, the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 60 and 10, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, 
but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. thee. And that's what, that's what it's going to be. He smote us in, the, in, in his wrath by putting us upon the curses because of our disobedience. But he's going to have favor upon us and show us mercy by bringing us into that everlasting glory that he's promised to bring us into, that expected end. You see? So our land is going to be tilled and sown. Verse 10, And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, all the house of Israel, for you members of IUIC talking about the two-thirds are going to be burning in hell forever. No, man. The two-thirds are going to be reincarnated into the kingdom after death by pain. They're going to be our sons and our daughters in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be their fathers. There ain't going to be no Israelite burning in hell forever. Most I say he's going to multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. Because they're Israelites and they, they have a birthright to partake in. It says what? And the city shall be inhabited and the way shall be built. And we showed you how they, they were going to be built by you heathen. Verse 11, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will sell to you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah. You hear that? That goes into us being brought into that full glory, and us being brought into them blessings, man. You see, and our land is going to be built even greater than it was, you see. During the time of the uh, Garden of Eden, or the Garden in Eden, let's say it like that. Verse twelve says, "What? Yeah, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men." Meaning what? We're never going to die in our land again. You see, you had a lot of Israelites die in that land because what? We were we were sinning, we were going off, and the wages of sin is death. But once we're brought into that everlasting covenant, that second covenant that the Most High has promised to bring us into, we will never die again. You see, we're going to be in a state of immortality. That's these. This is all what the Most High promised, and this is all that the Most High is bringing us into, man. You know, and yeah, it's going to be repetitive because it, this is this is a set vision. It doesn't change. It doesn't alter. You see. Verse 13 goes on to say what? Thus saith the Lord power Yahweh, because they say unto, unto you, The land devours up men, and has bereaved thy nations. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations any more, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Neither, neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen anymore. Ain't gonna be no more fucking mosques or Catholic churches or fucking Talmud based synagogues in our land. Ain't gonna be no more pink city and kosher pig. You see, all that bullshit that's going on now is it, it, it will be a thing of the past. You see, once we come into power, it says what? Neither shall thou bear the reproach of of the people any more. Neither shall thou cause thy nations to fall any more. Say if Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. And that go, goes into when we went into the land, the Most High gave us the, you know, the standard to live by, the law, statutes, and commandments, and we broke it. Started following after the, uh, the customs of the heathen, worshiping their idols, you see, doing all manner of wickedness. You see? And we became unclean. And what happened? Verse 18. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen whither they went they profaned my holy name and when they said to them these are the people of Yahweh, and are going forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel did, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whether they went. Once again, how do we do that? By worshiping the gods of the heathen nations, by, by practicing the customs of the heathen nations, basically becoming what? Gentiles, 
in the flesh. You see? Completely departing away from the ways that the Most High gave unto us to keep. We 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 came we we started to walk into a uh, we started to walk in a Gentile state of mind, man. But it goes on to say, verse twenty one. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen whither they went. Israel to be renewed for his name's sake, to fulfill what to fulfill the oath that he swore upon himself that he would keep. That's what this thing is all about, man. You see, the Most High keeping the oath that he swore on himself that he would keep. And a lot of you Israelites don't want the Most High to do this. You want to stay here in Babylon. You see, you still want to continue to move and, and act however you want to act. That's not that's not what it is, man. And this is why the Most High is only dealing with the remnant of the nation of Israel. Those who are in the same spirit as him and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So verse 22 says what? Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord power, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was, was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, saith the Lord power Yahweh. When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And that's our, that's taking place now. And it's just going to continue to increase the closer we get to the end. Until the Most High is a glorified by taking his remnant up into that gigantic chariot. Then eventually we come down according to Revelation 21. And the Israelite takeover begins. According to the Most High's will to fulfill the promise and the oath that he made unto Abraham. Well, 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Why? To fulfill the promise, to fulfill the oath. This, oh man, it has not been disannulled. You see? 25 says what? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. What's that? The second covenant. According to what? The promise that the Most High made unto Abraham of bringing his seed into an everlasting covenant to be our God and for us to be his people. It's constantly reiterated all throughout the scriptures, man. It's, it's one narrative. It, it, it's not just this random thing and all these different events that are taking place in the Old Testament. Then when you jump to the New Testament, it's something new. No. No. What was being preached in the New Testament was, was what was said in the Old. Bringing our people back into remembrance that the Most High was going to uphold and keep all these promises that he made unto Abraham, man. It says what? Verse 26. A new heart also will I give, will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh, having our bodies changed, man. From these wicked, sinful, polluted bodies that we're in now, these mortal bodies, to those righteous, everlasting, you see, immortal bodies, man. And we're going to do what? Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you, and ye shall walk it, and I will and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. <laughs> I don't see the 1948ers doing that. Where are they walking in the righteous ways of the Most High? They still dying. That's not that's man. So it's so it's so many holes in that in that bullshit uh, fabricated 1948er existence, man. It's crazy. Because once again, prophecy exposes all. Right now, it goes on to say 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. <laughs> the, the scriptures are so repetitive, man. You see? It, and why are this why is it so why are the scriptures so repetitive? It's because the most high does not change. He does not alter. His counsel is innumerable. <laughs> innumerable. So like it, immutable. 
You see? That means unchanging or, or unalterable. See how it falls in line with everything he said he was going to do all the way back in Genesis when he was speaking unto our forefather Abraham, man. 29. I will also save you from all your uncleanness and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. What's that? The blessings. Go read Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Once again, that, that goes into the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. No more suffering, no more pain, no more A, no more being in the low condition. Go read the, go read the blessings, man. That's what all this leads to. And you got Jay so concerned about clout chasing and being a goddamn uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite YouTube superstar, man. That's not what this thing is about. We're supposed to be down here uplifting and exalting the name of the Most High God, Yahweh, and bringing the remnant of our people back into remembrance of what the Most High promised to do for, our, for, for us, man, according to what he promised Abraham. You see, which was passed out of Isaac, then Israel. We're supposed to be bringing the remnant of our people back into remembrance by preaching this gospel, man. Finally being taken from this low fucking condition that we've been suffering for centuries now, man. For generations. We're about, hey, it's about the end. 31 says what? Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight. For, for your iniquities and for your abominations for acting like complete assholes down here following after these wicked ass heathen especially these damn devils these Edomites man you see shit the remnant is already in that spirit of, of loathing ourselves man Lord willing we continue on to the end, to the end. we're in the spirit of repentance already so the two thirds are going to have to suffer this in the kingdom of heaven being ashamed because you didn't want to listen to your fathers. <laughs> Verse 32 says what? Not for your sakes do I do I this, saith Yahweh Vashem Yahweh Shah. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh Vashem Yahweh Shah in that day, that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. And I'll... And I will cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be built. Cleanse through our iniquities by way of who? By way of our Lord Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. You see? That's what's going to allow us to be brought into that second covenant. And eventually we will be taken back into our land to fulfill that promise. Because that land still belongs to us. Even though the heathen over there running buck wild in it. Doing all manner of madness in it. That land still belongs to us. And it's going to be cleaned and purged. By way of nuclear fire. And once, and once the smoke clears. And that land finishes burning. And the trees start to come up out of the ground again. And you know. Go back to being better than the Garden of Eden before it. We're going to take you heathen. You see. Put you in shackles and chains. Caught you off into our land. And you're going to cultivate it. You see, it says what? 34, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate I Yahweh have spoken it and I will do it for, for y'all in the back Ezekiel 36 and 36 I Yahweh have spoken it and I will do it and we're in the process of it we're in the process of it being done right before your eyes right now this is what you're witnessing right now me making this video these brothers making these different videos brothers going on the highways and byways tonight saturday and sunday this is the most highest process of bringing it all to pass and as we're speaking these words you're you're watching it manifest right before your eyes and before you know it 
we'll be living this out in the fullness of it. According to what the Most High has promised, man. So you heathen ain't stopping shit. All you're doing is playing your part as a role player, you see, and, and, and bringing the, the Most High's will to pass. That's all you're doing. Especially you damn devils, you Edomites, man. 37 says what? Thus saith Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. You see that going into what us being blessed and our, and the fruit of all uh, the fruit of our loins being blessed, our children and the remnant of Israel. You see the house, the the Israel of God. We're calling out to the Most High to bring it to pass. You see, and it's being done because we're being brought back into remembrance of what was promised. That's why uh, Romans fifteen and four says what. The things that are written aforetime are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see? That's why we can look back at to, to the things that were said in the past. To the things that the most high has promised unto our forefathers. We can look back at those things and know and understand. You see, moving in the proper spirit, that the most high is going to uphold this. And we're holding the most high to it because if he doesn't do it, he's a liar. And we know that that's not the case. Right? Verse 38 says what? As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem and her solemn, and her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah. You see? So we're going back to our land, man. According to the promise and the oath that the Most High has made unto our forefather Abraham, you see, that was later passed down to, passed down to the chosen seed, and Isaac shall thy seed be called, who came forth from Isaac, Jacob and Esau, who was chosen of the two. Jacob was, and he brought forth what? The twelve tribes of Israel, and that's who's going to be brought into all these promises, all these blessings. Whoo! Romans 9. <laughs> Romans 9 and 1, it says what? I say the truth in Mashiach, I lie not. This is the New Testament, right? My conscience also being bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I might, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption. We are the Sia. Strong's G, 5206. We are the Sia. We are the Sia. That relationship which the Most High was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art holy people unto the Most High God, Yahweh. Yahweh have chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. You see that? And that was and that was fully signed and sealed through Yahweh Shah's blood. And the glory, which is the kingdom of heaven, those new bodies, that's the glory. And the covenants, the old and the new covenant, pertain to who? The Israelites. Fulfilling the promise made unto our forefather Abraham of what? Bringing his seed into an everlasting covenant to be our God, and he's gonna be our people. Uh he's gonna be our God, and we're gonna be his people. You see? And the giving of the law pertains to who? The Israelites. And the service of the Most High, which is the priesthood, which will come, which will what? Priest under the order of Melchizedek now, just like Abraham was. Did not Abraham give up burnt offerings? Did he not give up sacrifices to the Most High? Oh, on, under what order did he do that? By the one he was blessed with, Melchizedek. And that's what the Israel of God is coming into. You see, the priesthood under the order of Melchizedek, where every Israelite man will be a priest unto the Most High God, from the from the Judites all the way down to the Issacharites, and every tribe in between. Every Israelite man will be a priest unto the Most High God, Yahweh, under the order of Melchizedek, like our forefather Abraham was, man. You see? And it goes on to say what? 
and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises. You see that? Which goes back to what? The oath that was made. It all pertains to who? The Israelites. The Most High's chosen people, us so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Mashiach came. Who is over all, ble the Most High blessed forever, so let it be. You see that? Yahweh Shah came for his people. Matthew 1 and 21. Acts 5 and 30. Yahweh Shah came for the Israelites to save us from our sins, to bring us back, you see, to the Most High, to restore that tethered, <laughs> that tethered relationship that had developed between the Most High and his people. Yahweh Shah restored that, man. The restoration of the nation of Israel to do what? To fulfill the promise and the oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham of bringing us back into our land and we're going to rule out of it as kings and priests on this planet earth. You see? According to what was promised. And so with that, man, I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, and the sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful Allah I came out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Baba.